Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's post-match media availability with Austin with Josh Wolf. While we wait for you to be able to record, which will happen momentarily, a polite reminder to please utilize the raise your hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. Um, we will get started here in 10 to 15 seconds as soon as the recording kicks in. All right, everyone should have a permission to record. Again, if you're not currently speaking, please do um, do us all the courtesy of muting yourself. We'll begin with Chris Bills from the Striker. Chris, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. Josh, uh, you know, obviously a lot to, to, to digest from this one, but we'll start with the, the you know, the handball, you know, that kind of kind of turned things. What did you see there? Have you had, had a chance to look at it? And has there been any, any explanation on, on the, uh, you know, the handball that led to the equalizer there? Um, I did see it, and on the field, the fourth official, uh, Davy Arnaud, had asked them, um, and, and he made it sound like that it had no nothing to do with hitting Alex's leg; that it actually just hit his arm. So he was clearly incorrect in his assessment, and he was telling us because Alex makes a direct play on the ball, and distance to the arm is minimal. And and again, I uh, I don't believe that's a handball. I really don't. And um, Again, we've had a couple of these instances that, that have gone against us. We had a similar action against Colorado where it, it skimmed somebody and it hit an out, um, you know, outreached arm. I think Shinyashiki, very similar. And it wasn't a penalty. So it's, I've been in this for a long time and I, I really, it's tough to know what a handball is and, and what a handball is. And obviously, um, you know, that's, you know, that was their third goal, I believe. So it, it's, it's obviously grabs the equalizer and, um, you know, it's disappointing to say the least, but you know, there's a lot of good in this game and, and obviously a real a poor start again to the second half. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I do want to touch, touch on Musa Jite. We saw a lot from, from him yeah. in the first half, the first 45 minutes. Uh, what, how much of a difference did he make with just his presence in there? And then what was, what led to him coming off at halftime? Looked like he might've been cramping there toward the end of the half or. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I've mentioned this a couple of times. He hasn't played since May. So we've, we've given him some, you know, certainly a few some minutes here and there. And we've tried to up his, his conditioning, but that was it. I mean, he was cramping, cramping in the 30, you know, early 30 minutes of the first half. But I think you see what he does. He has a, a presence to bring people in. He's, he's quite calm and good with the ball. And around the box, he's got power and he's got separation. And, you know, that's obviously we've lacked a striker for most of this year. And and again, it's it's not surprising to see. Um, it's an unusual opponent because they are man oriented today. They do make it challenging, but I thought he brought us into the game in, in good ways, and it allowed Drewsy and certainly Alex to get to some other areas where we could find some third man bounces and combine off of them. But um, you know, he's unlucky to not score. Obviously, he's a big part of the goal that that he heads down on frame, and and we're there to tap it in. But there was a lot of good, and you know, those are big positives. Obviously, we've missed that type of presence and just a real center striker, and you know there's a litany of things we can talk about for this season. That's been, that's been bad. And you know, there's been a lot of good as well. And, and certainly having somebody like him would have helped us in a lot of areas and you know, helped create chances. We you know, scored three today. We could have scored you know, a, a couple more. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't want to take everything, but I, I did want to ask you about the emotion of the second half, just sort of the spiral of, of, you know, what happened there. It wasn't all productive. I mean, Stuver Shub kind of, stands out the uh you know the 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 red card obviously and then but just the fight from the guys it seems like something you've been wanting to see uh what do you make of just sort of making sense of of what was good and what was bad from just the emotion that was pouring out there i think emotion's good i think that spirit is 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 excellent i see that spirit every day and um you know unfortunately it takes a little bit of you know a pro pro provocation from them scoring goals and and when it happened I've seen that happen a dozen dozens of times where the player goes to get the ball out of the goal and there's there's certainly some conflict there but Brad has every right to do what he's doing it's his goal let him go get the ball and you know guys tussle I've, you know you're going to see that you know many more times and the, it got a little heated but that's part of it and that emotion that sparks a little bit of you know certainly animosity and angst and, and again it shouldn't take that to get what we saw the last 30 minutes. What you saw the last 30 minutes from the players and from the fans was, was you know, un, unmeasurable. It's, it, it's unbelievable 
how, how committed they were, what Johan looked like for 30, you know, incredible. But the fans, the spirit that they brought, we talk about, you know, enticing one another, enticing the fans. And that's exactly what that was. And they pushed us as we pushed them. And, um, you know, that, that spirit was, was remarkable, but it shouldn't take giving up a couple goals and us getting into a, you know, a, a tussle with somebody. And, and maybe that's it. We need a little tussle. And that, we've talked about that. How can you provoke the spirit from each other? And, um, it, it was nice to see the spirit, the camaraderie, obviously the commitment to, to do everything to get back into that game. And, and again, down a guy, we, we had chances. Thanks, Chris. Let's go to Phil West. Phil. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I did want to ask about that momentum swing, though, in the second half, though. I mean, obviously started with the Espinosa yeah. goal and then carried through to the two trophies goals. So was that, would you attribute that just to the halftime subs and being unsettled, or was there something else going on that, that San Jose did that countered what, what you all had done in the first half? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think we, you know, we, we can say it so many times at half, we've got to come out in the first five, 10 minutes. We know they're going to come. We know they're going to come with energy, with intensity, with, and that's mainly what it was. They came with more energy and intensity and for lack of other word, we, I mean, we, we just didn't match the commitment and, the, and, the, and, and, and what they were putting into the second half, we were a little slow, a little sluggish. Obviously we brought in two subs. Danny Pereira was on the cusp of a red in the first half. He had a number of fouls and was getting talked to. So that was part of the concern there uh, rather than wait. And we've had similar situations uh, in the past where, you know, we have to make that decision quickly. And, um, you know, Sebastian brings uh, mobility. And, and obviously that was a big part of how we could keep the ball moving. And, and Cecilio came in um, to give us obviously presence as a striker. And I thought he did well once, once the half took on, but um, they brought energy. We needed, we didn't match that. And when we brought on our players and now there was an uptick of, of both those things, again, we were right back in a good place, but you know, it's, it's unfortunate. And um, you know, I'll take responsibility. Clearly we made changes at half and, and the game, the, the intensity changed and, and some of that, you know, is, is, is from just, you know, coming out of halftime, but, you know, clearly we didn't have a good, a good start to the second half. And then just real quick on rings performance. I mean, obviously such a great first half and then, yeah. um, you know, the, the questionable handball and then obviously the, the second yeah. yellow. Yeah. Rings, a uh, ring is, um, he's a man. He, he's a man and uh, we need more, we need more, you know, players that see what he does from a, from a physical side, from the mental, probably the mental side more than anything. Again, his willingness to compete, cover bag, and we move him into a little bit more advanced positions and he's given us, you know, goals. He's given us assists. He gives us quality. Um, and he also gives us the bite in midfield. And, and I think we've talked about it. We lack a little bit of bite in midfield when he's not in there. And um, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge next week without him, but uh, we got to find ways to push on, but his performance was, was again, admirable. For, for sure. And, um, you know, there were a number of them out there. And, and for, for the most part, you know, a lot of our guys performed well, but um, the downshift at the start of the second half was too significant and it cost us. Thanks, Phil. We'll go to Mark Turner with Last Word on Soccer. Mark. Hey, Coach. Uh, I just wanted to echo what Chris had said in regards to Gita. Uh, I thought he was outstanding in the first half and um, in, in addition to what he was doing on the ball, the way he was occupying San Jose yeah. defenders, it was freeing up space for his teammates. And uh, it would have been nice had you been able to keep him on longer, but obviously you <laughs> understand the reasons why you couldn't. Um, it felt like, like in parts, parts of the match tonight, obviously you were outplayed certain portions of the game. And there certainly was um, uh, a portion of, of, of bad fortune as well. There's no doubt about that. But also a couple of moments as well where, where the team just didn't seem to react and I want to say self-destruct, but one moment in particular was the hesitancy between Romagna and Berhalter on the edge of the box. I think it was for the go-ahead goal. Um, we've, seen, we've seen several of those moments this season where you know, players are being confused, somebody hasn't grabbed the nettle. Um, what did that moment look like to you and how frustrating was that? Yeah, I'll have to look at it. I mean, to give it a real, to give it a real look. Again, I think you know, you know, Sebastian came in there and, and again, there's a couple of moments where he, he could be better. He's a, he's a, you know, he's a young player. Danny's a young player. I mean, that's one of our gaps. I mean, we had Ulysses Segura who has, has been unable to play this year. So having more calm and some physicality and, and, and maybe decisiveness, people that have seen the game, seen those moments more often have a, a clearer picture of what, what's needed and required. And uh, that comes with experience and those young players, Danny and Sebastian in particular have quality, but you know, there are, we're taking some hits and the, you know, whether it's, 
you know, um, unjustly or, or justly, it's happening. And it, 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 you know, those moments are, are real and, and, and certainly transforming within the game. And I'll look at it a little bit more to, to, to you know, I'm not exactly sure um, the, what you're talking about, but, but uh, you know, you, you have a good eye. You, you've been on here plenty to, to talk about the game and, and see it in a, in a pretty clear way. So, um, yeah, indecisiveness, indecision in and around the box is going to cost you. And, you know, Johan has an athleticism, a speed, and a power that I think was on display um, when he commits to things. He's, he's usually pretty bang on as far as coming away with things. So um, we'll look at it. But, you know, it's disappointing. You know, I think, um, as you said, there were some moments in the game where we, you know, we, we fought to, to kind of get hold of it, but we also understood we wanted to be compact and, and minimize some of their opportunities. And I, I think we did it a decent job of that in the first half and not allowing them some access to some areas. And, you know, they had some possession, but I, I don't think they were hurting us terribly. And again, we knew the way they played. There's going to be moments to go quickly. It's just the way they play. There's a aggressiveness to man orientate. When you can break lines, you can move through them quickly. And it's always going to be finding that balance of when you go and go for the throat or when you go and now recirculate, set up your attack a bit more. But um, we had some, some very good actions that, that came quickly and um, we'll look at it. But in the end, it's, you know, it's difficult to swallow that result, uh, given given the emotion and the intensity and kind of the response and what it looked like the last 25, 30 minutes. But um, you got to be buttoned up for 99 minutes. And, and that's um, clearly what we have to continue to get better at. Can you just take a quick second just to talk about Rodney Redes' performance? Because he's been catching some heat in quarters this season. I thought he had a really good performance when he came on. What was your impressions of uh, his output? Yeah, I think he gives verticality. I mean, he was certainly combative and competing. He's, you know, I think for Rodney, he he tore a little bit of his meniscus early, and he's he's had a tough time dealing with that. There's been some swelling that comes back, and as a young player, I think it's it's been unsettling for him. But um, he also you have to perform, and you have to whatever minutes you get, there is a need to perform and and provide your role and responsibility as far as running behind the line, ball security, arriving in the box, creating goals, being impactful. And um, he's, he's had some growth and he probably hasn't gotten as many minutes um, as he'd like lately, but uh, he has been, been seeing minutes and you gotta, you gotta take those minutes. You gotta make impact when you, when you get those opportunities. Thank you, Mark. We have time for, for two more. We'll start with um, Jorge Ituralda and then finish with Claire Partain from Austonia. Go ahead, Jorge. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, hi, Josh. I just got a, a quick interview with Anthony Perkert. He walked from his uh, suite to the, uh, supporter section, kind of uh, thanking everybody, kind of apologizing. Um, he was shaking hands with people. And I asked him why why he was there. He, 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 he looked very sad. Do you guys talk after each game? Do you have goals? Do you feel any pressure for the results when you talk to him? Um, yeah, I mean, I talked to Anthony. He, he's certainly my boss. He's the owner of this organization. And, and he's disappointed. He was in the locker room. He, he had words with the players, which I think goes a long way. Uh, I think he's a very candid, genuine person, and he loves this team, and he loves this this city. He loves these fans, and, you know, he's disappointed along with many of the fans, and we know they deserve better, and, and we're working on making that better, and there's been plenty of obstacles this year that, that you know, kept us off track a little bit, but um, some of the onus is, is clearly on, on myself, our staff, and, and the players. I mean, we have opportunities to win games. We have opportunities to bring joy and, 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 and excitement to our fans. And I think we do that, but, but winning um, is, is what, what we're here to do as well. And, um, you know, I can understand the disappointment, but he's, um, he's fully committed. Obviously the, the resources he's put into this, to this stadium, to the training center, to our player acquisition, um, you know, he's, he's in it for all the right reasons. And, and, you know, tonight's, uh, a disappointing pill to swallow. And, you know, we always appreciate when he's around the guys. And, and as far as pressure, I mean, of course there's pressure. There's always pressure to perform and win. And I think there's also just some understanding of, of expectation and, and certainly what's transpiring thus far and, and what the goals and objectives are for the future. So, you know, some of those things remain to be seen, but, you know, I'll keep pushing these guys and teaching and, and certainly trying to guide these guys in the right way to, Again, get performances that are mostly like tonight, where they're very solid, they're very, you know, very committed, and, and we have a passionate group. But you know, we have to do it for ninety-nine minutes, and and that's the reality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Claire. Hey, Coach. Um, wanted to ask about mental toughness. Um, 
kind of in these past two games. Obviously, some uh, really unfortunate handball calls and other like really big turning points have happened. Um, do you see mental toughness? Have you seen some recovery that um, from your players, or do you do you see that as something that needs a little bit of work? Or what have you seen these past few games? Yeah, I think we've talked about it. Um, you know, some of the responses and some of the reactions. You know earlier in the year, but, but I, again, I think LAFC, obviously disappointing. You know, we get a goal early that's called back. So it's also the emotion of that. And obviously they get a penalty. They got a penalty tonight and we've had plenty of things that haven't gone our way. And that's, you know, that you layer that in and um, you know, we, we, we've talked about it a number of times lately. And I, again, I think the, the mentality and, and the response you see tonight is, is, is impressive, but you know, how can we deny that, those moments in the beginning of the, of the second half so that there's there's just there aren't those opportunities the mentality and the mental toughness now to come out it shouldn't take an action to see menta- mental toughness I mean, understanding what the game needs at the start of the second half and and we talked about those things to embrace what the first 10 minutes looks like and and come out in a strong fast aggressive way and um it wasn't there but you know the mental toughness and, and the response after that was was impressive and you know there's great suffering from the players and pushing to try to get the result um so th- there's a spirit there's a willingness and um you know we got to tap into that before um the big negatives hit and that's um you know that's been difficult to to, to see happen a couple of times thanks claire thank you coach thank you for your coverage this evening everyone please stay on the line for uh austin fc striker musa Jite. Good game, bro. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, Thank you for staying on the line. We now have Austin FC striker, Musa Jite, um, and also we have a French translator. So please do allow us a moment as we we translate both questions and responses. Uh, We can, as always, utilize the raise hand function and we can get started as soon as someone indicates that they would like to ask a question. We will start with Claire Partain from Austonia. Claire, you can go ahead. Um, I actually just uh, didn't take my hand down, sorry. No problem at all, no, no (laughs) problem at all. Um, Let's go to Chris Bills from the striker. Chris, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Musa, I guess, what was the feeling walking into the stadium tonight knowing that you were starting for the first time? And, um, you know, how did you feel like you made your, your, your presence uh, known on the pitch, you know, how did you feel about your performance in the first half? Hello, de savoir uh, comment tu te sentais quand tu es entré dans le stade aujourd'hui et qu'est-ce que tu as pensé du temps, comment tu as fait aujourd'hui en savant que tu étais avoir commencé le jeu et ce que tu as, as pu faire pour l'équipe. Bon, avant tout, euh, j'ai remercié le coach euh, avec la confiance qu'il m'a donnée. Il m'a mis parmi les 11 partants, ça, ça me fait plaisir parce que c'est normal, ça me fait plaisir de rentrer sur le terrain. Ouais. So he said that it was a pleasure to have the opportunity to be able to start today, uh, knowing that he was chosen at one of the 11 to start the game. It's always an honor and it was a pleasure and to be able to get out there. And then most... So can you tell us a little bit about your um, adaptation, you know, what, it, what it, it's been like physically trying to stay in shape while you were waiting on your visa? And, um, you know, obviously the cramping tonight had to have been frustrating with how well you were playing. But, um, you know, how are you working on getting fit uh, so that you can play a full 90 um, soon? Il a demandé, qu'est-ce que tu fais pour plus adapter? ici et aussi comment est la difficulté euh, physiquement de, d'adaptation pour que tu puisses jouer un jeu entier 90 minutes 
euh, et comme le, le camp d'aujourd'hui a pu être difficile pour toi pendant que tu jouais bah, c'est, euh, c'est une question de temps, comme j'avais dit tout à l'heure. Je l'avais dit, c'est forcément, quand, quand tu as resté trois mois sans jouer, c'est, c'est un peu compliqué. Euh, bon, je ne suis pas fatigué euh, dans, au niveau de mon, mon poumon ou de corps comme ça, mais je pense c'est un clame qui m'a un peu mal, quoi, mais ça ne m'empêche pas de jouer encore. Si demain aussi on joue un peu encore, moi je suis prêt encore pour jouer. Parce que voilà, quoi, je suis là pour Austin, pour donner tout. C'est pour ça que je suis là quoi, aujourd'hui. Yeah, so he said it's it's normal. It's something that you know you have to deal with, uh, but physically speaking, and and you know he he felt good uh, when it came to like cardiovascular fitness, and he's ready to play, and he was here to give everything he has to Austin. If we had a game tomorrow, he said he'd be ready to go. Great, thank you, Chris. Let's go to Jorge Iturralda. Jorge. We'll move on to Mark Turner at Last Word on Soccer. Mark. Uh, Bonsoir, Moussa. Bonsoir. Um, talk to us about the emotions going through your head when you connected with that cross, a great header uh, on goal. And then, of course, that didn't go in, but Sebastian followed up to, to school. What was the mix of emotions you were dealing with at that moment? Alors, il veut savoir les émotions qui se passaient dans ta tête quand la balle est arrivée à ta tête et tu as tout connecté et presque manqué le but, mais en, en plus que, que Sébastien a pu le finir, il veut savoir les émotions qui, qui, passent dans, qui a passé dans tes têtes. Bon, pour moi, ce n'est pas, c'est pas, c'est pas une grande chose. Pour moi, en fait, dans la Mataka, il faut avoir la tête toujours. S'il y a la possibilité pour marquer, tu vas marquer après. Tu ne laisses pas les bras. Euh, j'avais en occasion, je loupais après. J'amusais, je me disais dans ma tête, pourquoi pas Ça va venir encore. Mais malheureusement, après, je suis sorti. Euh, le, l'important pour moi, c'est quand l'équipe qui gagne. Après, c'est, ça, c'est ça qui me fait plaisir. Mais pour Moussa Dité, Marc, je m'inquiète pour Même pas pour ça. C'est sûr et certain, ça va venir. Mais le sincère, Austin, il gagne. C'est ça mon choix, quoi. franchement. Yeah, he said uh, you have to kind of do anything you can to get the the ball in the goal, and putting his head there was was is always gonna he's always gonna do that. Um, but at the end of the day, and it's frustrating, obviously, if you don't make it. But at the end of the day, it's it's the team that wins, and that's what's important. Uh, but again, he wants to ensure that you know he's gonna do everything he can to try to get that ball to behind the net. Knowing how good of a first half he had, how frustrating was it being on the sidelines, seeing how the second half unfolded? Alors, savant que quel bon premier temps que tu as eu quand tu étais dans le jeu, est-ce combien frustré étiez-vous euh, en, que tu as sorti pour le deuxième? Mmh, comme quoi, je sais pas, les réseaux, ça pique, hein. Alors, il a dit que comme, comme tu as eu un bon premier temps, ouais. euh, que c'est bien passé pour vous, est-ce que tu étais ouais. frustré pour, pour euh, tes sorties pendant non, le deuxième? Non, pas tellement après. Pas tellement. Je ne suis pas encore euh, frustré pour sortir. Après, le coach, il a fait son choix. Peut-être, voilà quoi. On a parlé de ça avant, avant le match. Il m'a dit comme ça, OK, je te fais jouer, mais, mais il fallait que tu donnes tout comme il faut. Hein. Ouais, si ça ne va pas, on va, te, on va te faire sortir. Il y a des gens encore derrière. C'est ça, c'est pour cela. Ben, ça ne m'empêche même pas de jouer. Hein. Je peux encore continuer la deuxième étape, mais bon, après le coach, il a fait son choix. Ouais, il faut respecter. Hein. C'est ça. Yeah, so he said, you know, it's the coach's decision and he respects that. Um, and, you know, and that was the conversation they had before the game. It's just give it your all and go out there on the field and, and play hard and we have people coming off the bench ready for when we need to give you that time off. And, you know, he respects the decisions from the coaching staff. Merci, Musa, uh, Musa and awesome translator. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Very kind of you. Uh, last question of the night. Let's go to Sebastian Herrera from Club Deportes. Sebastian, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. First of all, Musa, nice to meet you. Good evening. Uh, so, Musa, you have been working with the, uh, with the team uh, for a while. Why do you think the team hasn't been able to control the game while winning? Alors, 
et il a demandé, euh, comme tu as déjà passé beaucoup de temps à euh, travailler avec l'équipe, il veut savoir, à ton avis, pourquoi est-ce que tu penses que l'équipe ne peut pas se contrôler, contrôler euh, quand il, pendant qu'ils gagnent bah, euh, Pour moi, c'est un football. Hein. Ça va rester toujours un football. C'est comme ça. Il y a des hauts, il y a des bas. Actuellement, on est un moment difficile pour nous. Il faut, il faut toujours garder la tête, on va continuer à travailler, c'est tout. So he said, you know, this, it's a game of soccer. Uh, there are highs and there are lows, but we have to keep our heads on our heads, on our shoulders and, and fight and, and give it our all. But it's, it's the game. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Musa. Congrats and congrats to Bianca on a, a cracking debut as the club's official French translator to all the media in attendance. As always, thank you for being here and you will receive a recorded session or recorded versions of all of tonight's sessions um, ASAP. Uh,